Seaside's ardent followers from across the world. Welcome to our podcast series, She Careers. In this series, we explore different career choices that women can make and pursue. I'm your host, Neha, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Meet Preeti Sinha, a highly accomplished educator who wears many hats and has taken on various roles within the education sector and has a unique story to share. Let me tell you a bit more about this extraordinary mentor and teacher. Preeti's journey in the field of education is both inspiring and fascinating. With a bachelor's degree in zoology and a diploma in computer science, she started her career at NIT Limited in New Delhi, where she began as a group leader and later went on to become the center head. Oh, I see a twist here. So Preeti quits her well-paying corporate job. And she did so because she discovered her true calling that lay not in the corporate jungle, but in the field of education. Starting her journey as a teacher in a primary school, she realized her love for guiding young minds. Today, she serves as a principal at Gulmohar High School, where she continues to have a significant impact on both students and teachers. Throughout her career, Preeti has been recognized for her outstanding contributions to education. She has received numerous awards and accolades, including the prestigious Equip Award for Innovation and the International School Award from the British Council. Preeti's creative teaching style won her awards like the Six Thinking Hats Award from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam and the Innovative Teaching Award for her work on My Constructivist Classroom. But Preeti's influence doesn't stop there. As a seasoned trainer, she's conducted workshops on various topics such as mind mapping, constructivist teaching, and quality concepts for schools and educational institutions across Jamshedpur, India. And there's more, she holds he roles as a zonal coordinator for the Jamshedpur Zone Association of Schools for the Indian School Certificate and a quality assessor for the Tata Education Excellence Program. Join us as we learn more about her journey, insights and experiences and find out how she became such a successful teacher even though she didn't start with a teaching degree. So let us hear from the lady herself a very warm welcome to you, Preeti. Thank you, Neha. So humbled and filled with gratitude. I think you have really, uh, what should I say, uh, blown up the entire career, my career thing. Oh my. Uh, I'm uh, still a teacher. Uh, of course, uh, I'm uh, having the multiple hat of being an administrator and running a school with 3,000 students. But whatever yeah. you said was like, I, I'm honored. I'm honored. Feeling blessed. Thank you. It's our pleasure, Preeti. So uh, let's start, you know, from the point where it all began. So tell me, from zoology to computer science to <laughs> so many things, how did your journey begin? And let's let's hear a bit about that. Uh, after graduating with a degree in zoology honors from Patna Women's College, I made a career shift towards information technology, drawn by its promising prospects in the 90s. Hmm. As part of my internship at NIIT in New Delhi, I was presented with the opportunity to teach computer languages to professionals. Okay. Initially, I was a little unsure, but I decided to take a plunge. And to my surprise, the experience exceeded my expectations. Hmm. So the, uh, sh shifting from zoology to computer science was initially difficult, but later I think it was really fruitful for my future career. Yeah, that's nice. So anything that stand out from your first job? So your job uh, at NIT was the first one or did you get a chance to work anywhere else as well before starting? No, as I started my career as a, uh, as a computer professional. Actually, I was a faculty over there. Teaching was already in my blood, I think. Mm -hmm. And I started uh, with, uh, you know, teaching various languages to professionals uh, okay. over there. So that was, of course, my first job. And uh, I think uh, I started enjoying it, the teaching part. Mm. And that's why till today I'm a teacher. Okay, now I want to know the turning point. 
when you decided to quit this corporate job and then move to teaching full time? Yeah, I was before I quit my job, I was almost working for, for 12 hours a day in a corporate job. I had shifted from NIIT Delhi to NIIT Guwahati since my husband was in a transferable job. And I was heading the center over there. And um, then I became a mother. And I felt that was more important for me. And I realized that juggling a demanding corporate job with taking care of my daughter would be tough. Yeah. So I decided to take a break for four years to focus on her up upbringing. Uh, during this time, I also studied for a BA degree to improve my skills. So, and okay. then when my daughter started uh, kindergarten, I saw an opportunity to start teaching. I became an LKG class teacher, which oh. allowed me to balance my role as a mom with my passion for teaching young children. Okay. So this is yeah. how it all started. It was not really planned. All right. Um, okay. So when you started teaching, your first mm -hmm. stint at teaching, what is it that clicked with you? And what is it that told you, okay, this is my true calling. This is for me. Teaching, uh, I think I got the flair of it during my college years. I discovered my passion for teaching and learning actually during when I was in Patna Women's College, we were in the hostel mm -hmm. and there, you know, I had my cl uh, classmates who were also my roommates, fortunately. Mm -hmm. So I used to prepare notes, notes and enthusiastically share that with my classmates. And they were like, you know, Preeti, you explain the concept to us. And this really helped. And I started enjoying the entire thing. And when I actually answered my exam, I found that because of this experience, of teaching my own roommates, things were much better. I did well in the college, uh, uh, you know, degree. I was first class first in the university also. Yeah. So this experience was immensely fulfilling. And I found great joy in facilitating uh, learning among my peers. So it started in college only, you can say. Wonderful. That's nice. Okay. So here's my next question for you, Preeti. How did you move to leadership roles? in teaching so did you did your uh, corporate stint help you in any way of course of course uh, my journey from teaching to a leadership role was more a matter of chance after joining a prestigious school in Jamshedpur as a teacher I stumbled upon a you know advertisement in the newspaper for the position of primary head at Gulmohar High School mm -hmm. so seizing the opportunity I applied and for and was fortunate enough to be selected uh, and uh, you told me about the corporate background. Yes, definitely proved invaluable in my new role. Drawing from my experience in the IT industry, I implemented digital solutions to streamline various processes within the school. Okay. This initiative not only modernized our operations, but also empowered our teachers to become proficient in ICT. So yeah, today nice. our school is 100% digitized. Each classroom has interactive pan panels with Wi-Fi facilities. So I can owe all this to my, you know, first job at an IIT. Awesome, awesome. That's wonderful to hear. All right. Um, uh, Preeti, you know, it's it's very common for women um, to, like you just mentioned, you decided mm -hmm. to take a break of four years to focus on uh, your daughter. So this is a very common thing with most of the women who start their careers and then take a gap. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, what would you say to women with long career gaps? willing to enter the education sector but who are unsure about their abilities what do you have to tell them a uh, few tips you know uh, it's nothing wrong in starting a career at any age i believe because now looking at the dynamics uh, of the global village we are living in we can start a new career any day but there are a few things i think we should focus on one is start small so if you're new to that particular career especially teaching consider starting with a volunteer or part-time role uh, to ease back into the workforce and gain confidence. Yeah. And this can also help build connections, experience and credibility within the education sector. This is one part. And the second part, which normally what we do that we start working on our weaknesses. I believe you should work on your strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have empathy, compassion and quest for lifelong learning, you will definitely succeed as an educator. So continuous learning is the key. And even if like we are working, I have been working for the last close to 20 years, learning hasn't stopped. I keep on looking into, you know, upgrading my skills with the changing environment. And that we need to do throughout a career. Even after your, our retirement, you should do it, I believe. Yes, yes, of course. And that's what keeps you going. So wonderful yes. tips. 
start small keep working on yourselves more than the weaknesses work on your strengths wonderful mm -hmm. well said beauty right thank you all right um okay now how important do you think uh, preeti is mentorship in the field of education particularly for those looking to advance after a career break uh mentorship plays a pivotal role in education particularly for individuals seeking to progress after a career break mm -hmm. in our school we prioritize mentorship by assigning each new teacher a mentor these mentors offer invaluable guidance aiding newcomers in adapting to the culture and policies of our school not only this additionally we extend mentorship to our students through a buddy system where okay. senior students mentor their peers okay so this also is a wonderful opportunity not only that uh, the child who is learning uh, from the uh, mentor uh, is learning uh, is improving uh, the mentor also you know uh, develops a lot of leadership qualities That's and cool. uh, yeah uh, uh, Yeah, uh, and as, as with that, you know, so mentorship is something which is extremely important, and I think good call, uh, you know, organizations are looking into enabling the new teachers or new students in uh, with the system. Hmm. Well said. Yeah. True. That's true. All right. So we've had a set of some serious questions. Now I'm <laughs> going to change the track, and I'm going to ask you a quick set of fun questions. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, my first question here, Priti, are you ready? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, if you were a school subject, which one you would you be, and why? Ah, uh, it would be psychology, helping readers delve into the intricacies of mind uh, and human behavior. I think this is going to be wonderful. And recently, I have completed my post graduation in psychology. Oh. So you know, I was thinking, why didn't I start early? I would have. I should have learned this subject early only. What is the most interesting thing in uh, the subject psychology? What is it that you think that clicked with you? Uh, okay. uh, uh, it has helped me as a you know administrator. Plus, you know when you are dealing with children and young minds, uh, mm. uh, the uh, if you are uh, you know knowing uh, some a bit of counseling psychology, it really helps to understand the child's point of view, and then provide help to the child. and with this today's changing world you know mental and emotional health is becoming a big thing yes so right. psychology is something which i think should be with every teacher that's why in bed the child psychology is such paper always it is always available in bed also okay right right okay next one priti what is the weirdest excuse a students given you for not doing their homework <laughs> students come up with great excuses one of the common one is that you know someone expired i don't know how many times they their grandparents their grandparents yeah this is one of the <laughs> yeah. common excuses but one uh, a little cute one was that you know one child came that why did you it, it was uh, that child was not my student but basically when i was the primary head the teacher class teacher sent the child because he had always he used to always come up with unusual tales mm -hmm. and she thought that ma'am should also have fun you know so mm -hmm. she sent him the, he was a great storyteller also mm -hmm. and he came to my room and said what happened why didn't you complete your homework so he said that ma'am i had done the entire homework so nicely and diligently but what to do my younger sibling came and he just painted everything with all the colors he had <laughs> so you know children come up with great excuses so this was one of them which i really liked he was just a standard two child <laughs> coming up with such nice stories okay and they can be really really creative and they're extreme. creative yeah okay so if you were to create a school mascot based on your teaching style what would it be mm i'll i would have made a uh, mascot named inquiry explorer Huh? Uh, who is also a captivating storyteller dressed in adventurous attire with a magical book in hand okay. this inquiry explorer would roam the school sharing intriguing stories that spark curiosity and encourage students to ask questions oh my god okay i can uh, actually i love to i love i i love to ask questions and i push my children to ask a lot of questions oh, because yeah. i feel that only keeps you know helps them to improve and yeah. utilize the higher order thinking skills Yeah, so I'm already getting the visual of you being the mascot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the next one. What's the most creative excuse you've used to get out of trouble during your own school days? Let's hear from you. This one is excuse in our school days. My God, not at all. I was quite timid and a shy uh, student. And to cook up a story specifically when I was wrong was difficult for me. So I don't remember. 
coming going to the either i was very quiet when the teacher asked or she would just scold me and i would listen oh. but i don't remember of uh, coming up with a story you know to excuse myself okay so then i was very shy and very timid very different from what i am today uh -huh. all right okay <laughs> Okay, now the next one is if you could swap roles with any fictional teacher from TV or movies, what would it be and why? Uh, I would choose the Ram Shankar Nikum from the movie Tare Zameen Par. I'm sure all of us have seen it. Uh, his character por portrayed by Amir Khan is a mm. compassionate art teacher who recognizes and nurtures the unique talents of a dyslexic child. Yeah. So this was something which uh, really, the, where the parent couldn't handle the child, the teacher, that's the power of a teacher, Neha. Yes. That's the power of a teacher. Yes. You know, I always tell my teachers that, you know, we can make or break lives. That's the power which we have. So why not make lives? And very I think uh, Amir Khan portrayed it very well in Tare Zameen Par. True, true, true. I agree. I totally agree. All right. Now, what's the silliest mistake you've ever made in front of your class when teaching? Uh, I think uh, when I was, uh, I have this habit of forgetting names and, you know, continuously multiple times I was calling a child with another name of his classmate and mm -hmm. he, you know, was trying to prompt also that, ma'am, it's not, it's not me, but I went on speaking and I was felt so embarrassed at the end of the day that <laughs> what am I doing? And this is something where now religiously, you know, I try to... Uh, focus consciously to learn the names of the children because it does it doesn't really look good you know that you don't remember the names of your students when you're teaching them every day all right the next one if you could design your dream classroom what quirky features would it have let's hear some fun answers mm -hmm. in my dream classroom the walls would be would be having interactive screens that okay. can transport us to any place or time in history with a touch Oh, so, wow. you know, my IT background always keeps me looking into how IT can be utilized to make the classroom more interesting. So, uh, instead of the traditional whiteboards, there would be holographic projectors bringing oh lessons God. to life in 3D. Okay. And a, a, one more thing, one more thing. A built-in uh -huh. snack bar with healthy treats would keep our energy levels up throughout the day. Should also oh, be there. You know? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Who wouldn't want to be a part of such a <laughs> wonderful, great, great day? Okay, the last one, Preeti. If right. you could invite any celebrity to be a guest speaker in your classroom, who would it be and why? For me, Sudha Murthy. Ah. Her multifaceted journey as an author, philanthropist and a social worker insmi ins actually inspires me deeply, you know. Hmm. I believe her insights into literature and social so service would be invaluable for our learning journey and our students. Her stories resonate with meaningful life lessons and I'm certain her presence would ignite a scent of empathy, values and social responsibility among my students. Yeah, that's true. Wonderful. I'm also a huge fan of Sudha Murthy. Well said. Wonderful. All right. That was great. Thank you to a wonderful guest, Preeti, for sharing humor, fun, laughter and insights with us today. Preeti, your story, stories have truly brought not just joy and laughter, but also inspiration to our listeners. This is your friendly host, Neha, signing off. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories and insights on SheSide podcast series, She Careers. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, keep shining bright. Thank you once again, Preeti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neha. Love you. <laughs>